I'd like to speak to any spirits that are with us at the moment. It's like partially blacked out and I don't know why. I can see it, yeah. You can see it, okay. So something caught my eye and there's a sliver of light coming down the picture there. And I saw a shadow figure walk from the side of the, the left hand side of the fireplace and it almost looked like it looked at me, but I couldn't see any features. Can you do something <laughs> to let us all know that you can hear us? If I hold out my hand. Did you die in this room? Were you one of the poor people that couldn't afford to pay back the debt and ended your life in this, this room? Now, when I was sleeping in here last night, I was hearing very loud bangs. They seemed to be emitting from this wall over here. They found a baby wrapped up been dead probably hundreds of years. Is that you, Jeff? No. Oh. Shit, that's loud. I just saw something bizarre go through you, Jeff. <gasps> I just seen a shadow in that doorway.
Our investigation continues at St. Breville's Castle, the most haunted castle in England. So far, we have encountered paranormal activity not only during the night time, but also throughout the day. In the morning, we collect all of the memory cards from all of our static cams to download. Once the footage has been stored onto an external hard drive, we will then erase each card and place the cards back into the cams and carry on recording throughout the day and the night time. It's 8 o'clock in the morning and whilst I'm returning to Static Cam 7 which is facing the staircase on the first floor to put the memory card into the camera, I hear loud footsteps above me coming from the guard room and hanging room. Everyone is accounted for as Mark and Phil are on the ground floor kitchen having breakfast. With these loud footsteps in broad daylight, we set up three static cams covering the area. We let the cams run for four hours and when we review the footage and audio, there is a voice that has been captured on the static cam in the hanging room saying, death, followed by a loud bang. Here is the enhanced audio taken from the static cam. Night time falls and we decide to go to the guard room and hanging room for our first session of the evening. I'm calling out to any of the spirits that may be up in this room or, or these two rooms. I'd like to talk to you and maybe get to know your story a little bit more and the reasons why you may have been justly or unjustly hung here. I'd like to introduce myself. You might know me anyway because I stayed here last night in that bed. Um, it was a pretty eventful night. Um, so yeah, my name's Mark. My friend Jeff's on my right, and Phil, my friend, it's on the left. Do you think maybe you could give me your name? What was the reason... That you may have been hung here. Was it a justified hanging or was it for something really minor and you think that that sort of punishment shouldn't have been handed out to you? Now when I was sleeping in here last night, I was hearing very loud bangs. They seem to be emitting from this wall over here. Footsteps all in the room, but mainly the footsteps were coming from where there's a gangway out of a fire door over there, which would have led into the other part of the castle, which is no longer there. Who was making the footsteps? Was there many of you or was it one single person?
Mark receives an EVP, a response saying, not them. Here is the voice taken from Mark's digital recorder with enhancements. Who was making the footsteps? Was there many of you or was it one single person? Who was making the footsteps? Was there many of you or was it one single person? It seems very, very quiet in here at the moment and it's not like this room because even before I'd gone to sleep and I was up here just relaxing for five or ten minutes, I was hearing banging, footsteps, maybe the occasional thing that sounded like a voice. Could you make the bangs again that you were making last night? And they were really loud, so if you could make them again... Do you think maybe if I knocked on the wall you could knock back to me? Did you hear that then? Was that knocking? Yeah, that was four knocks back. Did you hear that then? Was that knocking? Yeah, that was four knocks back. Thank you, that was brilliant. If I do it again, can you copy me again, please? We can hear you, that's brilliant. There we go. We can hear you, that's brilliant. Now let's try something else. Could you make the knocks even louder for us? Or do I need to knock again for you to copy? It's coming from the bed next to you, Mark. Thank you. Coming from the bed next to you, Mark. Thank you. Could you maybe rustle some of the covers that are on the bed for us? <gasps> I've just seen a shadow in that doorway. Mark sees a shadow figure in the doorway, but in fact it is further away inside the next room and our static cam has captured what Mark has seen. Here is the footage from our static cam within the guard room.
Could you maybe rustle some of the covers that are on the bed for us? <gasps> I've just seen a shadow in that doorway. We leave the guard room and hanging room and go to the solar room and banquet hall on the first floor. This is where the body of a baby was found wrapped up in the rafters when renovations were taking place. There are reports that visitors still hear the cries of a baby. This room was also used as a court where prisoners were brought to be tried for their crimes and on the fireplace there are notches from the strike of a sword each time a prisoner was sentenced to death. There's also reports of when this room was being renovated, they were taking down some of the wall and the ceiling and they found they found a baby wrapped up. Been dead probably hundreds of years. And they say that you can hear the cry of a baby. And when I looked into this, it was, uh, it was an old custom that back in the old days when people were dying of the plague and all sorts of diseases, obviously babies and young children, uh, died and believe it or not it was a tradition to wrap them up and put them in the wall or the ceiling to ward off evil spirits and uh, over many years a lot of visitors here have heard the cries of a baby Are there any other prisoners that are here that were sentenced to death? If so, come forward. And if you can, do something, please. Touch one of our devices. Move something. Knock on the door. Is there something that you can do? Who's in charge of this courtroom? What's your name, please? If I took some wood from the forest, or maybe apples, what would be my sentence? After spending some time in the solar room and banquet hall, no evidence was gathered. So we moved on to the prison where there are reports of poltergeist activity, voices, footsteps, growling sounds and visitors being grabbed by unseen hands. I'm currently stood in what was the uh, 
debtor's prison. It was the um, holding cell. Um, it's a pretty grim place, to be honest. Um, as it's laid out at the moment, um, it doesn't look too bad with the uh, bunk beds, uh, etc. But when this was in operation, people were locked in here, not just one or two, but many, many people. There wouldn't have been any glass in the windows. Um, at the time, there, there would have been a fireplace, um, but whether you had anything to burn on it, who knows? The thing with a debtor's prison is if you owed money, particularly to the Crown, and you couldn't afford to pay it, then you were just imprisoned and you didn't get out unless that money was paid back. So it was down to your relatives, really, to try and find the money. Um, and if you didn't have anyone, then that was it. You were here until you died. You didn't get any food. Again, that was down to your relatives to bring food for you. And indeed, if they had any, they could bring you some coal or some wood to put on the fire. So it would have been a pretty grim place to be. Imagine 20, 30 people in this cell all sharing what could loosely be described as a toilet which apparently was deliberately blocked, so the stench in here would have been horrific. Now, there's been lots of reports in this room, um, quite dark reports really, which is understandable considering the condition people were kept in. But, um, there's apparently poltergeist activity, things move, um, people get pushed, people get pinned down to the beds. There apparently is a growling sound. Generally, lots of things go on here and not necessarily good things. Now, I actually slept in here last night. And, yeah, I was a bit uneasy. I heard noises, but mainly from above. But we'll see when we review the footage if anything was picked up. Anyway, what I'd like to do is ask any spirits that are here in this room with me at the moment to make themselves known. Can you do that now for me? Shout out your name now and let me know who I'm talking to. Did you die in this room? Were you one of the poor people that couldn't afford to pay back the debt and ended your life in this, this room? This, this prison was used for quite a long time and I believe right up until the 1830s people were still being held here. Is that right? Wait a minute, someone's touching the back of my head. What's that Mark? Something's touching the right side of the back of my head, like brushing the, the hair up and down. That's, bizarrely, that is one of the reports in this area that there have been well, reports of um, stroking. Yeah, 
it was very gently but very noticeable because my hair my hair was moving I um I felt it and then I thought, oh, I thought nothing of it and it kept happening and it was probably for it's probably been probably happening for the last three or four minutes just feels like someone's brushing the back of my hair like that I'll see if it happens again okay was that you letting yourself be known? Can you do it either to Mark again or to Jeff or to myself? My name is Philip. Was that anybody? I heard a voice. I, I heard it. It was more like a growl. Yeah, I heard that. Something, yeah, yeah, um, some sort of voice or it's like response. Uh, uh, yeah, G sorry, please, please excuse us. Could you say that again, please? As I say, I slept in here last night, I slept in this bunk down here, and um, you allowed me to have a, a, a reasonable night's sleep. But um, we would like to talk to you to find out who you are, why you stay here. Do you feel that as your debt wasn't paid off, that you, you can't leave? Because that's not the case. You can leave. Things have changed and you wouldn't be in that situation now. It's recognised that sometimes people struggle, that sometimes people lose their money through no fault of their own and it isn't right that the rest of your life is taken from you because of that. Now the the device which I'm holding in my hand here will help me hear your voice. Can you shout into it please? If I hold it out, shout into it. Tell me your name. Is that you, Jeff? No. Oh, shit, that's loud. Shout into it. Tell me your name. Is that you, Jeff? No. Oh, shit, that's loud. Shout into it. Tell me your name. Is that you, Jeff? No. Oh. Shit, that's loud. Where's that tapping, banging coming from? Sounds like it's behind me. just behind Jeff. Yeah. Okay, you're behind me now. I can hear you, thank you. The sound of footsteps passes by me and walks behind Phil and, as this happens, there is also the sound of breathing. Here is the audio with enhancements. Behind me. Just behind Jeff. Yeah. Okay. You're behind me now. Behind me. Just behind Jeff. Yeah. Okay, you're behind me now. Are you sat on the steps now? Are you watching me, wondering what I'm doing?
are you, as I say, are you, are you in a position to move something? See the light, which is down there. Are you in a position to make that move? Phil receives an EVP, a man's voice saying yes. Here is the audio with enhancements taken from Phil's digital recorder. Are you, as I say, are you, are you in a position to move something? See the light, which is down there. Are you in a position to make that move? Are you, as I say, are you, are you in a position to move something? See the light, which is down there. Are you in a position to make that move? Footsteps. Whereabouts are you? I can I can hear you, but I can't see you. Can you can you make yourself visible to us? Is that possible? I just saw a black shadow move across the sign on the doorway. That's where I'm hearing the footsteps from. behind you again, Phil. It was behind me, and I felt something brush past my T-shirt at the same time as the noise. What are, what are, you, what are you doing over there? We're going to be here. We're going to be here for the rest of tonight. Oh, yeah, just oh. Like, we're right here burning bad. I just saw something bizarre go through you, Jeff. The black mass that... Something's touching me. Yeah, it was a black mass that came down and it went down across your shoulder and down through you. Yes. Uh, that was sound like a male's voice. Quite really. Um, you know what I heard? Go on. I heard um, a man sighing. Yes, yeah, exactly what it sounded like. like. That's what, it yeah. was sort of like. Oh. That's it. That's why I said it sounded soft. As we are about to wrap up the session inside the prison, we all hear what sounds to be a disembodied sigh of despair. Here is the enhanced audio taken from Phil's digital recorder. What was that? Did you hear that? Yes. Did you hear that? Yes. We finish our session within the prison area and with only a few hours left before sunrise, we sweep the castle with the SLS cam to map in any figures that our eyes cannot see. We start off on the ground floor in the old stables, working our way from room to room. We were coming up to the end of our sweep and we had no figures captured so far. 
until we enter the solar room and banquet hall and as we enter a figure appears on the screen. It is only visible for a few seconds before jumping off screen. Then as I pan left another figure is mapped in. Phil and I place three motion detector lights on the first floor staircase which lead up to the guard room and hanging room as there seems to be lots of activity in this area. If there is any movement near the stairs these lights will activate and turn on. It was time to get some sleep and we leave all of our static cams running throughout the castle. An hour and 15 minutes pass when there is movement which is captured on our static cam 8 filming the first floor staircase that leads to the guard room and hanging room. All three motion detector lights all activate as if someone is walking by them and has gone up the stairs to the above floor. And on the first floor where I am sleeping, a loud noise like a door slamming awakes me.
In the morning, we gather up and pack away all of our equipment, and, as per usual, we do a walkthrough of the location to make sure everything is accounted for. And, as Phil and I walk into the old kitchen, we notice stones on the floor, which are spread over a wide area. The reports in this area are of stones or pebbles that materialize and fall from the ceiling. We check the ceiling and there are no gaps from where these could have came from. And we check the fireplace which has been sealed off. If any pieces of stone had fallen from the fireplace, there would be other stones or dust on or under the grate. As you can see in these photographs that were taken upon our arrival, there are no stones on the floor or beside the fireplace. With our two nights, Locked down inside St Breville's castle, we all encountered multiple events of paranormal activity. A place of cruelty, suffering and death for many of those that were imprisoned here. And there are still many more secrets that are to be discovered from a time past and long forgotten.